Hey guys, this is Tip. I hope everyone is well. Um, it's been about maybe a month since the last time I uploaded a video. Longer than I expected, but you know, life at times, you know, it's just, it's just you have to go with the flow. Um, I'm well. I'm alive. My son is alive. He's been sick yet. He's about with, you know, epilepsy. The weather things of that nature and I have my own little trials and tribulations but I'm back and I'm here I got a couple of things I want to talk to you about I'll hopefully I can get this all in I want to make this video short but anybody knows that <laughs> these videos are never short um so it's a lot of things on my heart uh but hopefully I can get to all of them uh, I just want to start off with saying sugar. Sugar is still bad. And um, for a little while now, my son has extre had extreme incontinence where he would use the bathroom frequently and just it just seemed like he couldn't hold it and it was just, you know... And I'm thinking it's the, you know, Keppra. And because it just seems like that every time I gave him the Keppra, he would pee, you know, on himself or, you know, have an accident. And so I brought it to the doctor. They looked at me like I'm crazy. Like, no, we don't think it's the Keppra. It's something else. But they didn't really tell me what it could be. But they said they didn't think it was the Keppra. I'm still thinking it's the Keppra. I'm still thinking like, okay, they're not listening. Um, so I had to do some experimenting. And then it comes to find out that it is not the Keppra. It was actually uh, my son's intake of the generic Kroger um, honey oat, like generic Cheerio, honey nut Cheerios, but the Kroger brand and syrup. So uh, I found this out when he ran out of that cereal and out of syrup and um, he wasn't eating that. And then all of a sudden he was okay. You know, he wasn't using the bathroom like crazy. And so I gave it to him again. You know, I bought some and I'm like, oh, he's starting again. And I think it was that. So I stopped giving him that and he stopped acting that way. Um, and so I went and bought the Publix brand and it's much less sugar and he doesn't have that problem anymore. So sugar is still bad. It it can affect you in many different ways and it was infect affecting my son's incontinence so if you have a special needs child or adult can't seem to figure out why they always peeing on themselves or having problems with the bathroom you take them to the doctor they tell you oh there's nothing wrong there's no urinary tract infection mom you're crazy you know um if you've been going through that then maybe it might be the sugar intake so now I have cut out that brand and all, you know, you know, I get agave syrup and or sugar free and we don't have that problem anymore. So I'm very happy. It took a while to figure it out, but I'm so happy. So I want to share that with you all. I also wanted to talk about uh, natural pesticides, um, bugs, you know, nobody likes them. And for some reason out in the South, they're just abundant, not for some reason, the climate and the the foliage and, and, you know, just things that cause, you know, insects. Anyway, they have a lot of that out here. Um, but, you know, a natural pesticide, if you're one of those people that, that are into natural things, right, natural remedies, try planting. If you own your home, of course, or if you got a good landlord, you should plant mint herbs around the premises bugs hate that so it's a natural pesticide mint herbs that's pretty cool um also i want to tell the young ladies who get their nails done constantly and I see a lot of pictures on Instagram, and I mean, the nail bed is beat up. I mean, it's not worth it. I think you ladies should start letting your nails breathe, you know, maybe get them done once, maybe twice, maybe three times. Remove them, give your nail, 
you know, give your nails a break. Because some of them now, ooh, baby, they just look really bad. And I mean, no. Give your nails a break, ladies. I'm sorry if I'm dragging. <laughs> sorry. All right. Um, okay. And then, you know, let me give you some signs if you do need to change your nail salon. You know, you know, they ain't all good. So, one sign is if they do not use new equipment, like new file, or they don't change the head off the, um, the little electric thing that they use to shape the nail. Look for stuff, cer certain stuff like that. Like a nail file, that's really cheap. They should be able to, you know, switch that out. You know, and with everything going on right now, you got to be careful. Um, if they uh, happen to be a, a different, a foreign speaking, you know, group of people, um, and you get in there and, you know, they're talking that language, which is fine. I believe they should be able to talk in that language. But it gets a little tricky when they're talking and they're looking at you and they're laughing. And it feels like you're talk they're talking about you. I think that's rude and I think it's unprofessional. I think it's bad for business. Okay? It's a difference between communicating and making fun of your customers. So be aware of that. Or take somebody with you that can speak the language. How about that? Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, if, if you ask a question or you have a demand and they give you the worst attitude, like, you know, you, sh you know, like if they give you bad vibes because you're saying, oh, I don't want you to push down my nail bed or, you know, certain things and they're just impatient with you, snippy. It's time to go. You don't have to take that. You don't have to give them your money. Um, if the price changes after your nail is done. If they quote you a price and then you're done, it's like 30 more dollars. Okay. They might get you this time, but they won't get you again. And last but not least, if they, you know, if they're just aggressive with you, if they're not gentle, if you tell them something hurts and they laugh or they just play, you know, blow you off, then baby, it's time to go. Ask me how I know. Mm. Ask me how I know. Ask me. Yeah. Okay. Um. To the young people, everyone has doubts. You're going to have doubts all through your life. But, I, but advice, I, what I would give to a young person is conquer your doubts. If you have doubts, write them down, whatever they are. And one by one, eliminate your doubt. Eliminate it. And that will help you move better throughout life. Because if you don't face your doubts and you don't look into it and do your research and do what you want, you'll always be unbalanced and iffy and not really having accurate knowledge to proceed. So face your doubts and eliminate them, whatever they may be. Um, I wanted to say this as well. Let me see how long I got. Okay, I got eight minutes, so I'm doing well. Um, I was thinking, you know, when it comes to God... When you search for the truth, he gives it to you, you know? If you're really searching wholeheartedly, you ask him in prayer and you do your part, he will give you the truth. But when it comes to the world, when you search for the truth, you got to take it. You have to take it by force a lot of times because no one is going to give it to you. You know, there's an African proverb. I'm probably saying it wrong, but I heard it. And I'm like, wow, that blew me away. It said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, take somebody with you. Something like that. So it totally makes sense. Okay? But um, back to the God thing. That's just how loving God is. He will give you the truth. You just ask for it. In this world, you got to fight for it. Search for it. Die for it. Okay, um, also, young people, trust your instincts. Trust your guts. Who cares what other people think? Who cares if, you're be, if they're going to judge you? 
Who cares if they ridicule you? We will be judged as individuals, not a group. If something is not right, get out of there. And worry about whatever, you know, worry about it later. If it wasn't nothing big, you can laugh about it. Like, a, oh, you was out of there. Yep, sure it was. <laughs> I'm alive. You know what I'm saying? Deuces. Um... And don't let anybody talk you into doing anything that goes against your spirit. Like, you know when something isn't right. Your body, even if your brain cannot register it, your body is going to give you some type of signal to say, uh, uh, alarm. Listen to the alarm, okay? We have a conscience that God gave us. So, and it's some, like I said, sometimes people who, you know, certain things happen to them and they don't understand what's going on, but their body... Is telling them something. I'm telling you. Listen to your body. Um, Okay, so now um, I want to change gears just a little bit. I want to talk about two things that, you know, kind of touched my heart. Well, definitely touched my heart. I don't know which one I'm going to say first. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to do the uh, vitamin D. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about vitamin D now. I, I just learned something in it. it uh, I just kind of like had an epiphany. Not an epiphany, but it just brought everything together. Everything made sense of why certain things happen. So first of all, Alexa, what is vitamin D? Vitamin D is a group of fat-soluble secosteroids responsible for increasing intestinal absorption of calcium, magnesium, and phosphate and multiple other biological effects. In humans, the most important compounds in this group are vitamin D3 and vitamin D2. The major natural source of the vitamin is synthesis of colocalciferol in the lower layers of skin epidermis through a chemical reaction that is dependent on sun exposure. Y'all got that? Okay, so it's something that we need. It's something naturally in foods. And also, we can absorb it in the sun. Okay, but... African Americans with melanin have a harder time absorbing the vitamin D because of the melanin in our skin. So we are likely to be deficient. Um, and the darker the skin is, the more likely you, you'll be vitamin deficient. Um, I said all this to say is that I found out recently when you go to the doctor, the most expensive blood test in that realm in regards to cholesterol and, you know, checking your, you know, your basic things for your health is vitamin D. A cholesterol check is $8. Vitamin D blood test is over $100. They have raised that price so high that a lot of insurance companies have opted out to even pay for it. You have to come out of pocket. Now, that doesn't seem right to me. Vitamin D is a very important supplement that we need, and especially in the African-American community. But we all need it, but especially in the African-American community. So why isn't that a priority? Why is it something that is affordable? Why is it ignored like it's not a uh, vital to life? Vitamin D is extremely vital. And then you wonder why the rates of breast cancer in black women are higher than anyone else. They're not checking for vitamin D. Most of the time you have to request it. And insurance companies are not paying for it. I was just totally blown away when the lady told me the prices for each individual test and that vitamin D is the highest. Is this intentional or is this a grandiose oversight? I don't know. You make your own decision on that one. 
But I do want you to know that don't be blind to this and make sure you keep up with your vitamin D levels, okay? And I know it's got to be like between 20 and 50, your your, your numbers. Um, so if the doctor ain't checking up on you, check up on yourself. If they say it's going to be $160, then say, okay, if you ain't got it then, save up, get that vitamin D check. It's vital for life. Make sure you get that done. It, because it doesn't seem like the healthcare people do. They don't care. Because if they did, that would definitely be a priority. And it wouldn't be so expensive. And I think it would be definitely less deaths. You know, because vitamin deficiency in African Americans lead to cancer. And most likely we're going to die from cancer. Maybe not immediately, but eventually. And then um, one thing I noticed about clinical trials. Now, clinical trials is usually uh, what you go through after, if you have cancer, melastotic cancer mostly. And um, the, the chemo isn't working anymore and no medicine really is going to help you. You know, you don't have that much time. You just, you know make yourself comfortable live the rest of your life out that type of clinical trial um no matter what it's only going to be six months i've talked to many people and they've had the same story as my mother my mother went on clinical trials she, she was actually doing well you know they gave her all these rules regulations that she had to follow or she couldn't get the medicine had her running around like a guinea pig meat right by her side trying to make it so she can live longer and we did everything and she met her requirements she met everything doing great she it was a time where she said i don't even feel like i have cancer tiffany that six month mark came and they took that medicine from my mother. That was it. She was feeling well, doing good, and it didn't matter. Oh, we don't think it's working well enough for you. And took it away from her. Then they stuck her in her breast and to take a biopsy. And basically opened up that cancer and it festered even more even faster she kept on you know telling them and they like they like oh it's just a infection it's just you know this or that they knew what it was but um she died uh, a couple of months later so me and another person was talking and was saying well if we were, had, were in that situation, we would probably not even go through the cl clinical trial and just maybe even have an opportunity to live longer than if you were. But, you know, some people were sacrificial and they like, you know, um, I, I'm i willing to do this testing for other people and maybe help other people in the future. If that's the type of person you are, then that's fine. But if you're talking about longevity or living the long, longest that you can after they didn't told you nothing else can help you, you might want to skip the clinical trial. But anyway, I think that's all I'm going to say today. I've said a mouthful and I hope that um, um, somebody got something out of it. Okay, no, one more thing. Lark Voorhees, our favorite Saved by the Bell character. Recently, it came out that they were doing a reboot. Everybody excited, including myself. Then I heard that she will be excluded from all things, you know. I don't know for sure, you know. I don't know if they sent her some money or anything like that. But it looks like they have totally excluded this young lady. And I think that it's totally unfair. Um, I feel like... It was a, a, a TV personality, a TV personality, Adrian, on the reel that stated that she felt like it was discrimination against mental illness, and I agree with her a hundred percent. I feel that uh, she could have had an opportunity to do a cameo. She could have been a teacher, and that, you know, had a little part in there, um, or they could have threw us some change. So, 
my advice to anyone coming up and interested in being in sitcoms or series, get you a good lawyer, have them put in the clause that if there's any reboots of this show, I must be included either visually or financially. If I am deceased, my family should be included visually or financially. And if you have a good lawyer, he can get it in there. So you will always be included in every reboot. And that's my advice. So anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to upload another video. Um, and I hope you guys are well. And if you don't see me in the flesh, look for me in paradise, baby. Mwah.